All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. This is Geddes, W-A-B-Y-A. And I'm going to make a real quick uh, video tutorial here to show what uh, an actual uh, meteor scatter contact looks like. In this case, it's going to be on six meters and um, a little bit easier to uh, illustrate uh, what they look like on six meters versus two meters. Um, uh, not that they can't be done on two meters, it's just rocks are more plentiful and signals are usually stronger on six meters uh, for most stations uh, than it is on, on two meters. So what we have up and running here is um, uh, PJ Ping Jockey and we're actually using a shell that's uh, made by Dan and 5TM and uh, pretty much everybody uh, stops using stopped using a, a PJ directly off the internet and everybody uses this uh, shell which is a, um, a much much more user-friendly way of uh, of uh, communicating and setting up schedules and things like that so everybody uses this site you drop in a message like for example I can say uh, KB7IJ um, I can say Rich do you want to try a six meter QSO and um, my internet's a little bit slow here but uh, eventually my message will uh, will make it uh, past uh, the ISP and there's a message that's been posted and we'll see if uh, if Rich uh, replies. Rich is uh, getting bombarded with snow and ice down in the Dallas uh, Fort Worth area so it's been a really crazy winter uh, this season so uh, Rich replied he's ready to go uh, he wants to use a frequency of 280 so what we can do is I'll show you uh, like I said in this video here I'm not going to show how to set up WSJT which is the program that we use for Meteor Scatter I'm going to save that for a another video in this video here we're just going to show what a meteor scatter contact looks like and some of the things that you can do uh, while the QSO is going on to help you uh, make the contact. So in this case uh, I'm going to be using my uh, Flex uh, 5000. Um, it's already set up on 6 meters, uh, set up on uh, 50.280 I've got it set up in a digital mode uh, which automatically disables speech processing or any kind of equalization. You can see here like if I was using a microphone this equalization curve uh, it looks pretty radical but that's what's needed for um, a D104 that I use with this, uh, with this SDR. So when I pick a digital mode, it disables all that equalization, speech processing, and everything, and it just gives me flat audio, which is exactly what we want. So we go ahead and uh, there's some audio, and let me turn that down. And uh, when you start up WSJT, you'll notice that there are three windows that come up. I have mine set up so that uh, as soon as it starts up it's already in the monitor mode and uh, what I'm going to do first here is we're going to put in Rich's call up in this two radio box. We hit look up. It automatically comes up with his grid square it gives me a beam heading of 233 degrees, which is about where I'm pointing. Uh, elevation angle for optimum 
meteor scatter would be about 5 degrees. That's about the takeoff angle of most people's antennas anyway, so that's kind of good. And it gives the distance. Rich and I are fairly close here. Uh, we're only about 856 miles apart, so that's a sweet spot actually for for a 6 meter uh, meteor scatter. Um, so again, I'm not going to talk about all the different various settings and all that. I just want to show you what kind of signals uh, appear on the different uh, windows here and what to do about it. So let's type in a message to Rich. We'll say that uh, BYA is going to go second because the station that's further west goes first. Let's pick FSK441 and let's use uh, ST on. And so we'll go ahead and uh, uh, ask that question of, uh, of Rich. We'll see if he has any problem with that. And if he's okay with that, then uh, what we do is we pick here in our mode, FSK441, which we are. Uh, I uncheck this box because I'm going to be going second. And um, there he goes. He's running. So I'm going to turn this up a little bit. And... I'm going to be transmitting on the second 30 seconds of every minute. Rich will be transmitting starting at the top of the minute and running for 30 seconds. So as soon as, so right now Rich is actually transmitting. I'm going to hit, there you go. You see this burst up here that happened? Now watch what happens. I'm going to right mouse click in this area. And notice when I right mouse clicked in here, look at that beautiful decode that I got. Now watch what happens if I don't click on it and I let WSJT click on, uh, decode this automatically. Notice that it didn't get as good of a decode automatically. It did pretty good. It got Rich's call, and it got part, and it got most of my call, and that actually would be good enough for us to move on to the next uh, square here, because we do have both calls in here. I can take part of this uh, portion here and add it to this portion here, uh, and I, and as long as I've got both calls. Um, I can move on to the uh, to the second message, but notice notice what happened here when I click on this area. Look how much better the decode is. Also notice when I right mouse click, even though I get good decodes, like right there, that's not too bad. Usually I get, yeah, see like right there I'm getting just a bunch of R26s. Every time I right mouse clicked in here, see I'm not getting any kind of a good decode. If that's a, with a left mouse click. But if I right mouse click, look at that. I got a really nice decode. So since I have both call signs the rule is this once once I have both call signs I can move on to the next box so at this point I can select this um, well there we go I gotta generate messages <laughs> Rich reminded me that I had the wrong call signs so there we go I put, um, what I did is I put Rich's call sign in, I hit generate messages, now I've got Rich's call sign up here and I'm actually sending his call sign out along with mine.
but I just wanted to show you let's turn that down a little bit we don't need that so loud um, these are what bursts look like and Rich has always got a tremendous signal and so you can see these slight anomalies appear in the noise floor and if you click on it if you right mouse click on it you can see you get a decode and what we're looking for is we're looking for his call and my call and that <clears throat> and a 26 which is the report so here we've almost almost got well actually we do because we've got kb7ij and we've got a report we've got a 8bya and you know what over here i've got a w8b so actually what i can do is i can combine data from here and here and i can actually say that i've got his uh, tx2 window but for the sake of this video let's let it go just a little bit more and you can see on the pan display on the flex we just had another nice little ping so if I come over here and if I click on it there we go that's a little bit cleaner and so you can see I've got uh, kb7ij we've got a 27 26 and then we've got my call so now that I got his second message I then proceed and I move on to the third message and I'm sending him a Roger on his report which was a 26 so I'm actually sending him a single tone and um, bring up that power closer to there we go we've got a lot of snow on the antennas and the SWR is a little bit wacky so but we're running close there we go and that's that's what a single tone sounds like notice it's just a single frequency and that is just a beautiful meteor scatter ping I mean listen to that you can't get any more beautiful than that so I was sending Roger 26 and Rich replied with a Roger 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 and what I can do then is I can go over here and then select 73 and now we're sending Rich a 73 to let him know that we got his Roger 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 now what you'll notice is that when these STs are being used when this box and this box are being checked and you're sending a single tone for R26, Roger, 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 or 73, they will appear, the R26 will appear on along this bottom line, actually easier to show here. See this white tick marks? The R26s will appear here. The Roger, Roger, Rogers will appear on this tick mark. And here he's sending... R26 or he's sending Roger 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 again and you can see that it's appearing along this second from the top tick mark and that's because we're both on frequency and um, uh, that's uh, that's the frequency each of these tick marks represents one of the four frequencies that's used in FSK 441 now as soon as he switches over to a 73 it should appear along this very top and let's ask him I'm gonna ask him to send a 73 ST and there we go see this you can just make out a faint there we go that was a nice meteor scatter burst and uh, and you can see here's the, the decodes for it so that's what a uh, what a typical QSO looks like when everything goes well um, that's what the 
the spec JT window looks like. Uh, I wanted to show that uh, usually I get better decodes when I uh, right mouse click on a burst versus a left mouse click. But for some reason on the ST signals, like there was a nice burst, if I left mouse click on it, like there, see I get a really nice decode. If I right mouse click on it, notice I get a bunch of garbage. So it's really interesting that when somebody is sending an ST signal, it's best to left mouse click the way I am now and I get perfect decodes. But when they are sending either TX1 or TX2, a right mouse click will get you a better decode. So that is what I have observed at my setup here. And so I encourage you to, uh, to experiment with that. So I'm going to go ahead and shut off the, um, we'll go ahead and turn that off. And I'm going to thank uh, Rich. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and shut off this video and uh, we'll see if we can get this posted. And then we'll make up another video showing what some of the different settings here in uh, WSJTR. And, um, you know, especially when you're starting out, there's sometimes some questions about what S values to use and what the tolerance means and actually what these ST buttons mean and things like that. So I'll go ahead and make up another video and post them separately because if I were to do this as one, it would probably be uh, too long. So, um, there we go. We can go ahead and uh, mute the uh, the flex, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, turn off this uh, this recording. So that's it for now. W A B Y A near Fort Wayne. Echo November seven zero. And what day is today? Today is the twenty sixth. 10.20 in the morning.